So what is the range of the remote idea? Let's find out. One of you wrote me yesterday, can you make a video testing the range? DJI says it doesn't transmit more than 150 feet, the same as 50 meters. Can you also fly 400 feet and test if the remote ID is detectable? That would be a great video no one else has done. And of course, I would like to do that. And just to clarify, 400 feet is equal to 120 meters. So let's test out how far out that we can actually detect the remote ID using this Android device. And I will, of course, step out of the car so <laughs> that does not interfere with uh, my testing. Let's just start by checking uh, the remote here. If we have uh, the remote ID enabled and we do that by going on the safety and scroll down to the remote identification section, UAS remote identification. As you can see, I have enabled my drone operator ID as part of the interface. So that means that the remote ID is a sort of a detectable. Let's see if we can detect it from here within the car and then we can continue to test the boundaries by stepping outside a little bit later. Let's just fire it up here. And, 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 and we're saying okay here. So. And we are using this field out here. As one of the things that I've learned playing around with remote ID is that it does not work until it's airborne. So let's see if we can detect the drone by launching the drone scanner. So. See if it scans anything. Maybe I should just lower it and bring it a little bit closer. So. Of course, it's a problem uh, when we are scanning for Wi Fi <laughs> and all sorts of stuff. So let's see if it can tell me where we are. We are here. So. No? Yeah? Yeah? So now we detected something here, and it should basically be my uh, drone. You can see that it has uh, the drone operator ID that I just showed before that is ending with 988. So this is uh, my drone. Maybe I should have given it a name. It'll make it easier for us to detect. So let's switch it into a map mode here so we can see what's going on. So the drone is actually out there somewhere. So right now it's, yeah, so let's try and move it a little bit away just to see what's going on. If it actually uh, updates the so we're moving it so now we put it putting it at 80 meters see if it actually updates the location so now it's turning blue i don't know why it's turning blue Move it even further out. So now it's 150 meters away. Can I uh, follow aircraft? So, no drones around. So at least at 150 meters, 40 meters. And as I promised, I will step out of the car here just in a second here. So, put it at 100 meters. So there it was again. Okay, so that's interesting. Let's, uh, let's step outside, see if we can continue this testing. We can, uh, maybe some of you can spot the location. This is where the farm, farmer <laughs> came and asked me if I was allowed or oh, if I, uh, yeah, if everything was okay, if uh, I was uh, sort of interfering with, with his stuff. So let's move the drone away from me. So 
See, now I'm around 120 meters. Still being able to track it. So now 150. So no drones around. So now it can't see it. So now it can't see it. So if I move it slowly towards me. So let's see when we start to pick it up. So it should be around 120 meters maybe. Let's just put it there. What makes this test a little bit difficult is that there is a time, there's a delay. Let's put a little bit further up here, 10 meters. And there should be no interference here. Whoa. Apart from me knocking the camera. <laughs> oh, there it was again. <laughs> Okay, so I might not be able to find the exact point, but let's see, it seems if I'm going to around 150 meters. Let's just put it there. There's a plain open field, so there's no obstructions between me and uh, the drone. So let's see, it says it's 10.5 meters above ground. That matches uh, nicely with uh, what I see here. I don't know how often uh, or how frequent uh, that it's uh, detecting. But still. So, it seems it's uh, every one minute that it updates. So it seems that I'm be losing it uh, when it's uh, on 150 meters. So let's just bring it in again. And uh, let's fly it in. Let's just put a little bit of nice video on here. So we put it at around. Fifty meters from me. And then we can spot it again. See, now it's uh, visible on uh, the display here. Yeah, and the map updates and everything is nice. So what we can do now is now we can try to increase the altitude to see if that is... Uh, uh, oh, switch hands, that's easier. <laughs> so let's go up. That says if it's 50 meters in the height. Let's go to 50 and we need to wait a little bit here because it takes around a minute for it to update and it's freaking cold out here <laughs> and I'm losing my pants. <laughs> is, we just look a little bit around here so let's see. The castle is up there. Stop the video here. Let's zoom in. So let's see how far we are. So we can still detect it. We are around one minute. And it's very nice to see that the counter actually only goes up to 60 seconds, then it refreshes and counts up to 60 seconds. Okay, so let's put the drone up in maximum height, 120 meters. Let's just use 100, just for the sake of it. So, let's see what happens. <laughs> So the castle up there, that's become significantly more difficult to fly in that area you know, right now with the new drone uh, legislation. There's a thousand meter barrier around uh, the castle as it is right now, so it's very, very difficult to get close to that unless you get permission from the military. Let's see what happens now. So, yes, now we lost it. Even though it's, uh, it's up there, it's very easy to spot. I actually have the lights on. <laughs> so, 
I have the lights on up there. Oh, it's still there. And it's drifting. You can see that it's drifting. So let's just see. See. So it basically can detect. Uh, at least it's detecting fine now in the uh, yeah, 50 meters away from me horizontally, and uh, yeah, let's put it up at 120. Let's take it to the max. So now we're at maximum altitude. Let's see what happens. Let's see if this one is still filming. Yes, it is. <laughs> so yeah, it's still detecting it. It's still detecting it. Okay. So let's uh, just mm, check this one. Oh, now no, we don't want to let that zoom. Zoomy, zoomy. Zoomy, zoomy. That is actually quite amazing. So we can look at the castle from here instead. Let's just try and do that. Nine times zoom. The video quality might not be the best <laughs> for this, but at least uh, we can do that. So, uh, come on. Stop video. Let's put it down to one, so you can see how far we're actually away from the castle. Okay, so we are still detecting the drone up there in 120 meters. So let's just fly it. Let's fly it a little bit in this direction. So let's say 100. So that actually means that uh, if you have like you have like this uh, yeah cube around you, where the drone can be detected. So people need to be fairly close to you to actually be able to spot you, because that's one of the problems with this uh, remote ID. It can still detect it just past uh, 60 seconds. Okay. So every time that it updates, it resets the counter. Let's just move it a little bit further. Oh. Move it out at 150 meters. Yeah, it still detects it when it's up there. So um, I guess if you're flying high, it can be detected at a pretty, pretty high altitude. Now I need to fly it back. Just cancel it here and just double check if we lose it before we need to bring it back. Yeah, I think we're losing it now, back basically. So when I go lower, it seems it has more difficulties uh, detecting it. Yeah, so now we lost it. So now I can bring back the drone and uh, give it another battery here. So what we need to do now is we need to just go push it a little bit to the limit here. So, so right now what, what, what we'll do is uh, we will fly it out. We'll fly it up in the maximum height and then fly out to maybe two, three hundred meters from here once it's detected. So there it's detected. So now we are at 200 and at the maximum height. So let's see if we still detect it. It'd be nice to know the limitations of this. So right now it says 43, 44, 45. Okay, so we kind of lost it there. So let's turn it around, see where we are. We are somewhere here. So let's move it back into 150 meters and see if it shows up again. If you have any other suggestions for tests that I can do with this uh, setup, testing the limitations of this, then let me know in the comments below. It is showing up, yes, it is showing up, okay.
So let's just verify one more time that if uh, I'm moving it out to 200, that I would lose it. It seems like it. <laughs> I'm cold. No, we still have it. We still have it. We still have it, okay. Then let's move it to 250 then. And you can see every time that it resets, that's uh, when it gets a ping from uh, the drone. So, yes, we lost it. Okay, so let's bring it back. Let's just bring it back a little bit here. So, 200. And just see if it shows up. And then I guess that concludes the test, and all we can. Uh, finish off the test as it is. But you can see the scary part is that it actually reveals my location. Uh, I can see the location of me as a, as a pilot here. Okay, so it's a... Uh, yeah. Okay, let's move it closer. 150. So it seems the limit is around these 200. I think it will show up now. Yes, it showed up. All right, so and now <laughs> I think that's enough for now. Let's bring the drone back. Oh, that was nice to be inside in the heat again. Yeah, where it's a little bit warmer. It's actually one more thing that I would like to test. So let's just throw up. Make sure that this does not go in horse mode. The weather here is actually quite nice. So, if I put the drone out here, so why I'm pretty sure that I can detect it. So there it is. So I can pull this up. Oh, I don't want to pull that up. So you can actually see that this is uh, the pin that shows uh, the aircraft. This is the operator location. And this is the most scary part about this, is that you can see the operator location directly from the app. So if you are out flying and you spot somebody using this uh, by using this app you can find out where the pilot is located uh, yeah simply by looking at the map here so that's kind of uh, scary <laughs> i think that's uh, that's the most scary thing about the, this uh, part no doubt about that so it knows where you're hiding so you can't hide in the bushes but as you saw, there are some limitations uh, about how far you need to be away from the drone, etc. to be able to pick it up. So as far as I can see and can conclude without having uh, watched the footage, it seems uh, that uh, there is a limit between around 120, 150 meters if you fly in a very low altitude. That distance uh, for detection increases if you're going uh, further up. And uh, I was actually capable of getting out around 200 meters from the takeoff point and still being able to yeah, at least sporadically pick up um, a remote ID from the drone flying at the maximum altitude. So if you're flying higher, it will be, you will be able to detect the drone further away with the remote ID app. It's not very scientific, but at least uh, this uh, is uh, the indication that, that I have uh, right now. If you're in doubt how you enable uh, the remote ID, I've made a video that uh, shows exactly how you do that and how you enter your operator ID, as well as uh, a few other videos around the remote ID in general. And uh, if you missed those, I'll make sure to link that through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you around.